So let's review the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, also known as RAS. Okay, so let's say you have a patient who has fluid volume deficit. So thinking back to our lecture on fluid volume deficit, we know that our patient has low fluid in their body. And this can cause a low blood pressure. And our body doesn't like a low blood pressure. So whenever it senses this, this RAS system is going to kick in. And the whole goal of the system is to increase your blood pressure. And how it does this is it gets angiotensin II involved, which is a hormone that's also going to stimulate other hormones, such as aldosterone and ADH, that antidiuretic hormone. And those hormones are going to add more water to your blood to help increase blood volume, hence increase blood pressure. So how this system works is that your blood pressure drops. That drop in blood pressure indicates to the body, hey, we have a loss of fluid, so we've got to do something about this. And this causes the kidneys to respond, specifically the juxtaglomerular cells inside that kidney. And they are going to release a substance called renin. And whenever renin is present in the blood circulation, this causes the liver to respond. And whenever the liver responds, it is going to activate a substance called angiotensinogen. And whenever angiotensinogen is there, it actually turns into a substance called angiotensin 1. So we have angiotensin 1, but again, the whole goal is to get angiotensin 2 involved because that is that big major hormone that's going to actually cause some things to happen. So we've got to get there. Now, how do we get there from angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2? Well, that is where ACE comes in. ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme, and this helps turn angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. And now that we have angiotensin II involved, things are gonna start getting interesting because now we'll be able to achieve our goal of increasing that blood pressure because angiotensin II has major effects on the body. One thing it does is it causes vasoconstriction. So we're gonna get narrowing of those vessels. And when we narrow those vessels, it's actually gonna constrict the blood flow to the kidneys and limit its ability to excrete water, which is what we want because we want that water to stay in the body right now so we can increase our blood volume hence increase our blood pressure. In addition, angiotensin II is going to cause our adrenal cortex to release a hormone called aldosterone. And aldosterone will cause the kidneys to keep sodium, which will also cause us to keep water. And again, we want to do this because we're trying to increase our blood volume. So whenever this happens, your patient will have a temporary decrease in their urination, which again is what we want. And then another thing angiotensin II does is it causes the posterior pituitary gland to release a hormone called ADH, which again is antidiuretic hormone. So how this works is it's going to cause the kidneys to keep water. And whenever we keep water, we're gonna increase blood volume. So think of it this way. If you're familiar with how diuretics work, we give patients diuretics to help them urinate extra fluid out of the body. It's used to treat a lot of times fluid volume overload. Well, if we're having a substance in our body called antidiuretic, anti means works against, we're working against that concept. So let that help you remember what ADH does. ADH is gonna cause your body to keep water. It has an antidiuretic effect. And then lastly, another thing angiotensin II does is it stimulates the thirst mechanism. If you'd like to watch more videos in this fluid and electrolyte series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.